Good evening, and welcome to Electronic Game Information and our continuing coverage of the Level Up Games Expo. Level Up has come and gone, but we are still here in beautiful downtown Las Vegas, Nevada, bringing you the most up-to-date video game news from the video game world that we can find. Now, we here at EGI had a lot of positive feedback about our coverage of Revenge of the Bird King. And so that so much so that we decided that we would uh, take some time tonight to do some extra coverage of a game that we feel that I feel uh, has not had the attention uh, that it deserves in recent years. I am, of course, talking about Colony Wars. Uh, there were three Colony Wars games, and we will talk about each of them in turn, starting with the first Colony Wars released for the first PlayStation in 1997. Alan, are you there? Alan? Uh, yes, Robbie. Hey, Alan, I are you are you, you ready to talk about the uh, the wonderful epic struggle between the League of Free Worlds, the Colonial Navy, and the Earth Empire? Yes, Robbie, absolutely. Uh, whatever you want, I'm here to support you in the show. I'm not going to mess up. I'm here to uh, talk about Colony Wars. Colony Wars for the uh, the first Colony Wars for the original PlayStation is a wonderful uh, space uh, shooting simulation. It's outer space. It's it's 3D. It's a lot of fun. Wouldn't you say so? Yes. Now, Alan, if you uh, could sort of uh, sort of extrapolate on that a little bit, I mean, we've had a lot of uh, years between the original release of Colony Wars in 1997 and, and now. So, what's been happening in the space simulator shooter genre uh, in that in that period of time? Mm -hmm. Yes. So so much has happened in the Colony Wars. I don't think we have time in the show to go through it all because it's so interesting and so much has happened. But, oh, the things that have happened, I can't even begin to tell you about them. Back to you, Robbie. Back to you, Alan. And, of course, you are all, already uh, starting, you're starting to look better. You're starting to look uh, fresher. You, you look like the, 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 the poison inside of you has evaporated and has been replaced with uh, the, 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 the liquid uh, that you the body needs to function properly. Yes, Robbie, that that is right. I had a bit of a hard. Vegas is a hard town, and it's a hard city, and people live fast and free. With and everything is interesting here, and I had I had an adventure that got me too excited, and the doctor said I had inflammation and dehydration. I had to drink alkaline water. So I a, a night's rest and a bottle of alkaline water can do a world of difference. I feel fresh and ready to not disappoint. I will not disappoint. And I am Alan on Electronic Game Information. And it's a great you, show. You could say, Alan, that the uh, alkaline water that you are drinking right now is like the fuel that would be inside of the space fuel for the space ships in Colony Wars. That's a great point, Robbie. I would say that the alkaline water that I've been drinking is a lot like the fuel inside of the space ships in the spaceship in the Colony Wars. Back well, to you, Robbie. Well, back to you, Alan, and let's take a quick video look back at the original Colony, colony Wars on the PlayStation. Roll tape. Enemy fighters detected. Alan, uh, you're the Colony Wars expert, so why don't you uh, tell us exactly what we are looking at here? That's right, Robbie. I am uh, clean, clean, clean-headed and clear-headed. I'm looking at a, cl a clip from uh, Colony Wars, and okay, well, okay, this I, seems to be a review of Colony Wars from IGN okay. 1997. Seems to be a pretty good review. Okay, yes, it seems like a popular game, though, uh, the, a pretty good review, and this is the gameplay. This so is this is a, this is one of those famous Colony Wars uh, interstellar spectacular. And okay, ships. and there's another review. Right, what is that? That's a review of. Uh, Colony Wars from GameSpot is the 1997 review of Colony Wars. Right. Well, wow. Okay. So that's Colony Wars, and this is Colony yeah, Wars. Yeah. These and are so starfighters. These are this. having sort of a dogfight in outer space. You can see all these beautiful colors and, and just very nuanced kind of movement colors happening and on graphics. the screen. Yeah, I see. And there's another uh, review that seems to be uh, it's, uh, all these uh, wonderful uh, observations about the quality yeah, of I, the original Colony got Wars. It. I think I caught that. And these are laser blasters, and they're shooting in space and. And, so what's uh, that little purple thing at the, the bottom? I don't there, know. Is Alan? that? I think I see something from a different. Is that? The, I see the Death Stars in the game. That doesn't look like. Uh, that looks like it could. It was upside down. So or it was two sides I'm or it's the same side. Okay. So oh. If you could read us that uh, well, review, we can, we can uh, get a little bit of no. okay, some insight into Colony Wars. What did, you, what, what did we just look at there, Alan? 
Well, Robbie, uh, you know, everything on the streets of Las Vegas looks a little different than it does inside the nice, cozy studio. And um, I guess I, we, we were looking at a clip from Colony Wars. Back to you, Robbie. Uh, back to you, Alan. And, of course, uh, I, we do have some, some, sort of a list of uh, things that we can read uh, about the Colony Wars let's do for it. the PlayStation. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the weapons. Because I think, you know, if you, you're playing one of these space shooters, outer space, you're in outer space, you're, you're enjoying the, the freedom of movement that only space that the only the void of space allows. So, uh, you know, you, you want to make sure that when you're out there and you're having your adventure, you have the best arsenal available. So why don't you talk, talk us about, tell us about your favorite Colony Wars weapon. Oh, my favorite Colony Wars weapon. Oh, okay. My favorite Colony Wars weapon would have to be one of the blasters or the guns that is equipped to your ship. Oh, uh, the, the sort of sense? standard blaster, the one the that never runs out of ammo. Uh, sometimes right. overheats, I think. That's some the of these one. blasters. Uh, I, I have to, oh, I, but you know, I think that what what people really want to know about is are, are the different secondary weapons, your missiles, your torpedoes, uh, everything that you might have a more limited inventory of. You'll be glad to get it because uh, you know, those are more powerful weapons. If, if you want to use something like the motion missile, Alan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the motion missile? The, mo the motion of enemy craft. I is that correct? Yes, the motion mis missile. The motion. The motion missile. missile Cracks. Cracks. The enemy craft. The enemy craft. There's also the tracker missile, however, isn't there? So what's the difference between the motion missile and the tracker missile? I would uh, I would have to imagine that the motion missile just goes by motion, and the tracker missile actually can know where you are, and it tracks So it's sort of like a, it could be a kind of a heat-seeking missile? Yes, it sounds, it sounds like it's probably a uh, heat-seeking missile. It's been and a long... You, and I don't you can know. imagine that even in the void of space where there is no temperature, that the heat coming off of the human body because of the passions being mm -hmm. uh, sort of brought into absolutely being in the colony wars because this is a war absolutely i know it's not, i know it's not it's not just a name it's an actual it's a series of events and i do know what starting you're starting with about. the uh, the 47th century and and we're here covering the level up uh, expo in las vegas where where is hype what is hyperspace and where where does where is that Hyperspace is generally just when you go extra fast through regular space. It's called hyperspace. What's subspace? It's the same thing. Subspace is, is similar to hyperspace. Is at least my understanding about the the two is that they're just they're they're you can they're interchangeable. It just means you're going very fast in space. And I'm happy to talk more about Colony Wars, but um, back to you, Rob. Back to you, Alan. And uh, we have, of course, an EGI. These are some EGI uh, exclusive Game Shark codes for uh, Colony Wars on the PlayStation. So if you're looking for infinite missiles, you'll want to enter the following uh, numbers and letters into your Game Shark device: eight zero one one nine C C zero 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 six will give you infinite missiles. Uh, eight zero one nine C four C zero 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 will give you infinite anti shield lasers. So if you're imagining you need to break through the shields, you'll need those anti shield lasers, and you'll never run out if you enter eight zero zero one nine C four C zero 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 into your Game Shark device, Alan. Got it. Now it can't be understated how much of a splash Colony War made the Colony Wars, excuse me, made on the console space shooter simulator market in 1997. So it was of no surprise, no surprise when a developer Psygnosis and publisher Psygnosis decided to finish the fight with Colony Wars Vengeance in 1998. And and, and here it is, a look back at Colony Wars Vengeance. Uh, on the PlayStation 1, 1998, a very good year for Colony Wars games. If you are uh, a, a fan of uh, the Colony Wars of 1997, you can just skip ahead one year and be in 1998 with a follow-up to Colony Wars. And here is the video for Colony Wars Vengeance. Alan? Okay. Okay. Response to Is this? I can't. Hmm. Hmm. I can't really see the game. What are we so this does seem to be an outer space kind of shooter. It seems to be uh, twin lasers firing off into the void of space. The planet, planetoids and planet, planetary bodies. 
And Devin saying Sentinel. The word it, Sentinel pops out to me, Alan. What does that right. mean? Right. It's in quotes. Uh, is it ironic? I'm not quite sure why. It could be a reference. Uh, that looks like the uh, ship from the Macross uh, uh, movies. Huh. And this is a different. This is Colony, Colony War. Well, the reason that Sentinel does jump out to me, Alan, is because Psygnosis or or Psygnosis uh, uh, did have a game called Sentinel. So, oh, so it's a it's a legal, it's a reference. And this is a this is a, this seems to be a, a really interesting type of. Uh, you see some differences in the cockpit here. Uh, that, from what I can tell. I think that hasn't changed. That makes the games nearly impossible. Level of difficulty. Colony Wars Vengeance is. Colony Wars Vengeance is. And this is Colony Wars Vengeance that we're looking at. And it, uh, if you, it, devastating Sentinel super weapons. I mean, how devastating does it need to be to have the word Sentinel attached to it, Alan? I don't know. I would imagine it would have to be quite a devastating thing. What's okay, happening? well, we have a very uh, special announcement, Alan. Tonight we have a very uh, special announcement. We have a guest here tonight here in the Electronic Game Information Studios. What? It is a, Who is it? It is a, uh, a wonderful guest named Jamel Johnson. Uh, Jamel Johnson is entering the studio right now. We have an actual Bobby. Colony Wars expert with us here. Jamel Johnson Bobby, I know is an artist, Colony Wars. a comedian, a writer, an actor, and of course, that's so a great. Colony but I, Robbie, Wars I know a lot of expert Colony who, Wars. Uh, who has who has spent as, as much time uh, playing the Colony Got Wars it. games next, and thinking about the Colony Wars games. But next time you need a Colony Wars expert, yeah. look no further than me. Uh, you don't need a special guest. I could do guests. Got, uh, if you I think know about, about Colony what, Wars. how expert panels work, usually you have <clears> two experts, and those are Jamel and you on okay. the show. So what you'll be doing is kind of a crossfire like a relationship so uh where you two i as the moderator if you must try and impress me with your colony wars knowledge jamel welcome to the show so happy to, to have you here after all these years and we kiss the arm uh because we are safe and uh we are talking about colony wars vengeance i don't want one What's, what the freak is popping bro what is popping is the space battles in outer space Yo, there, you, saw, you saw them out there the league of free worlds and the Empire, Earth Empire, the father and the czar are going at it. Their spaceships are deadlocked in outer space battle, and they there is just a lot of drama happening. You know I love so drama, Robbie. You love drama. You love the drama of the Colony Wars series. Absolutely. You love the Colony Wars games. What? Uh, uh, if there's three Colony Wars games, which one is your favorite? Um, I'm gonna say. Alan, uh, are you paying attention to this? Closely, I'm gonna say uh, Colony Wars 2 back in the habit. But Colony Wars 2 is back in the habit of bringing you yeah. epic space battles, although from the other side of the uh, war from the original game. Isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, Whoopi Goldberg's in both, but uh, this time she's uh, teaching uh, inner city youths in San Francisco. Oh. Alan, you hear this? He's, that's the plot of Sister Act. He's messing with you. I, uh, I, I'm well aware. I... But you know, it's funny because I love. Uh, first of all, big Whoopi Goldberg fan. She's great. No problems with Whoopi Goldberg. I just wanted to come in with a lighthearted. You've got to come feeling, in. It, you know, it's, it's, it's warming it's, us up. He's he's um, he's I'm Jamel. Funny, he's so into... we're so happy to it's have him funny. here. He's yeah. funny. He's he's lighthearted. <laughs> you know, we're talking about the serious stuff. I mean. Players uh -huh. it, that play the Colony Wars uh -huh. games are a serious bunch, and That's every once in a while you do have to crack the surface with a the if, like cracking the uh, hard-boiled egg in the morning. You crack the players of the Colony Wars series. Quick, one tap. a quick one tap. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about how to play Colony Wars Vengeance, since we did just look at these uh, Colony. Wars Vengeance uh, like video. Bobby Brown uh, it is wonderful to uh, figure out how to play these types of games. So you, what I have written down here is that you aim at the moving reticle when fighting a small ship. It shows you where you need to aim in order to hit the ship as it is moving, and as it takes time, and it takes time for the laser to travel, and it takes time. What oh, is that? So you have to like move. So like when you're shooting. The target's moving. Right. So you have so to line moving, it up for where it's going. Yes. So it, it's it's a it's a strategy, is what you're telling me. This is a real colony. This war. is a really colony. It's a brutal colony war because in the Whoa. 47th century, 
human civilization has expanded past its planetary borders yeah. and is out in the far reaches of space. So when you can imagine the League of Free Worlds comes back with the, the vengeance, the Colony Wars vengeance, although Colony Wars vengeance is from the Earth Empire side. Alan. Robbie, do you want me to do a interview with a character out here? No, uh, we've got oh, no inter uh, character interviews. Uh, nobody's stopping by. Uh, where you are at, Alan, you are out there on, on the on the scene, on the street. You hey, are alone. You are the sole. Hold that. Uh, you are the sole person, and you are lo uh, not lonely, but you will not be visited. Back to you. So, uh, Jamel Johnson, uh, if I could just, if I could uh, just, we were talking a little bit about the different types of weapons in the first Colony Wars game, right. and I'd like to talk about the weapons of the uh, second Colony Wars game, but I don't have a list of the weapons from the second Colony, second Colony Wars game. So, what, 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 what's the, what's the plan here? What's next? Uh, as far as how to discuss the weapons? Yeah. Do we just make them up now? Probably, I mean. So we on. have the Who's motion uh, Can missiles anybody track us? missions. No, I mean, there's a few people checking Colony Wars. Uh, this game thing doesn't facts, have a message board. No, this and nobody's. I, I, so I, you know, if, if you were to, so you've okay. got the heat-seeking uh, yeah. tracker missile, of yeah. Alan. Yeah, you got the heat seeker tracking missile, and yeah. you've got the motion tracking tracker missile. Uh -huh. See, and then you got the laser. And the so what? What kind of missile would you need? Would you imagine you would want to be able to add to the ship's arsenal the loadout? Could, the, the, the defense pod would be the cool. The defense pod. How's yeah, it? Like, uh, tell us a little bit about the defense pod. I well, mean, okay. I, you know, it's At like Jamel is. It's, it's you're like, great. It's like panic room. Panic room, but just. In it, what if it's just like a little cabinet? And you sort of eject it out there, yeah, yeah. And the colony wars gravy. find their way. Yeah. The colonies, is it a colony or is it? Who's using it? I'm confused. Um. Okay, the, the first thirteen colonies. That's take right. your and time because we have all the time EMP in the world. gun, there's grapple gun. Uh, New Hampshire, the mole missile, motion missile, uh, plasma torpedo, Vermont. Is Vermont the first Scatter, thirteen? Scatter gun, tracker missile. Robbie, I know all about colony wars. So, well, uh, when, did, when did Indiana become a state? It was a great, that was a, a wonderful answer from Jamel Johnson. Very thoughtful answer, very deep answer. We're talking about the colony Robbie, wars. I'm the colony wars. Uh, and expert. now we have to uh, uh, take a, uh, now that we are moving down the uh, timeline of colony wars games, we are now at the third colony wars game. Let's take a look at the third colony wars game, Colony Wars Red Sun. Roll the Colony Wars Red Sun clip, and we can take a long, good look at the Colony Wars in action. That owl is cracking. Well, you know, there it is. In oh, the uh, it's it, still in the wrapper. Then you bust it out there. 701638. So let's take that down and let's watch the Colony Wars clip. Should I put that in my notes? Alan? Great. All right. So uh, that was our uh, Colony Wars Red Sun clip. It was a, a very exciting clip, and Great it was look. very uh, good to look at. Wouldn't you say so? Great look. Alan, yeah. what, 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 tell us about what your, your, it's, it, you're, you're on the ball now. Let's hear your thoughts of Colony Wars Red Sun, the clip that we just watched. Robbie, Colony Wars Red Sun is gre a great game. You run a wonderful show, and the, the amount of work you put into it is undeniable and i just love watching the clips you show they're always so interesting well so one of the things alan i'd like you to co comment on is, is uh, in terms of the colony wars the red sun the third colony wars game you act there's a couple different uh sort of deviations from the colony wars formula uh one of the the, the big innovations of the colony wars red sun is of course the ability to target uh, parts of the larger capital ships that you are uh, combating in these outer space environments. Chop them, right? You sort of knock them out. Knock them out, knock out the turrets, East, right, yeah. uh, one after the other. Uh, have a great time uh, doing it. You don't uh, have to uh, just focus your fire bl blank blindly on these large ships out there in the outer space. You can actually use your limited secondary weapons like your tracker missiles, your defense pods, which Jamel, you uh, kind of explained uh, so beautifully. And uh, and now you can target more more precisely 
what you're trying to get. Absolutely, and it's such an interesting point by Robbie, and all of the points you make are usually so good. I feel like I have a lot to say about this, and I just feel like I would be able to comment on it better if I was in the studio with you. And not if Jamel was maybe if Jamel was out on the street, that could be interesting, and I could be in the studio with you. And I, I just think that would maybe help me in my um, thought process. Back to you, Rob. Uh, back to you, Alan. Uh, Jamel is here in the studio with me, and we are having a, an incredible, obviously, conversation about the, okay. these three games, the differences between these three games. The, uh, the truth about the Colony Wars. Red Sun is 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 as follows. The first Colony Wars game, you have a very clear motive. You are you are part of the rebellion uh, of the League of Free Worlds, rebelling against the Earth Empire and the Czar. Uh, in the second game, you start off as uh, you start off at the outset. Uh, you start as a, 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 a fighter pilot in the Earth Empire's Imperial Navy. Uh, in the third game, you play as a mercenary. Okay. So if you can imagine what the difference between those three types of people are going into this great conflagration, this great interstellar conflict that we call the Colony Wars. Way different vibes. Way different vibes. And you have, of course, uh, you have different type of mission select uh -huh. uh, system. Uh, you still have some of the, the elements within the Colony Wars series, such as branching story paths depending on which missions you uh, complete or fail and you also in uh, Red Sun you do have that new uh, inventory management system and uh, sort of a monetary system where you can earn money by completing missions to upgrade your ship to better experience uh, the Colony Wars as they should be Alan I just want to say I really I'm impressed by the amount of time and coverage you've put toward talking about Colony Wars. You know, you've been given this amazing platform. People tune in, they give you money to make this show, and you've spent so much of the show talking about Colony Wars. I mean, was it supposed to be about something else? No, it's a, we dedicate an entire episode to Colony Wars because so few people talk about this game anymore. I mean, you come back, you go back to 1997, 1998, year 2000, when Colony Wars Red Sun completed the trilogy, and all of a sudden, it uh, it, it uh, kind of wraps up. If we could just take a moment, because because I have been, you know, kind of preparing for the show, uh, researching the Colony Wars games, I'd like to show you an image here that I have made. Uh, this is an image, it's a, sort of a, a piece of art Whoa. that I made of uh, my sort of thinking about Colony Wars. Uh, this is not an actual Colony Wars ship. This is, is, that a just, little, is that a little penis on the bottom? No, that, that is a, what I believe to be a kind of emerald. Um, we don't know how these Colony Wars ships actually uh, operate in outer space. So the emerald's pink now? So it, the, I, I consider that to be more of a fuchsia, Alan. What do you think, fuchsia or, or is that pink? Is that is I, is that a funny uh, is that a funny color to use for an emerald? Absolutely not, Robbie. I think you hit the nail on the head. That's a fuchsia uh, emerald, not anything dirty. It's just a fuchsia emerald. I mean, that's fair. Uh, and of course, you can imagine the energy passing through the circuitry of the ship and out the emerald, being focused by the 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 emerald into a laser that is then shooting down other Colony Wars starfighters spacecraft okay. it is truly a a, a a different way of of thinking about combat flight combat when you have so little when the void of space is the <laughs> this environment is, this is amazing and let me just say i look I, I mess with it too and i i don't mean to penis shame y'all um emeralds you know what i'm saying i just thought it kind of looked like, but that no, was only, no, that's we're just so happy to have you here, Jamel. It's just it's such a it's such an honor to be able to sit here with you and discuss these issues. Uh, we uh, will not take you can say almost anything, and we will not take offense. Oh, I mean, all right. I, no, so let's uh, let's no, let's let's go to the phones and let's see what people are saying about Colony Wars. Alan, are you excited to hear what the viewers are, are talking about? Uh, to hear what their thoughts are now that we've sort of brought all of this information to I, the table. Yes. And uh, we are ready to, to have our first caller of the evening. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Electronic Game Information with Robbie, Alan, and Jamel. And we are talking about Hello. Colony Wars. Hi. Um, okay, so I just wanted to say at first that I really love the fact that you guys are talking about such nostalgic games. Um, 
but I I don't know. What do you, what do you think about Colony Wars? Have you played it yourself? You I have really I, I, it? I, I, extensively, and at the point, and and me too. You can't and uh, Alan is uh, is of course a big Colony Wars fan. Jamel's the Colony Wars. I used act to run it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we used to play it at the park. At the park, awesome. and uh, right. that's when you had those uh, portable, what those sort of uh, PlayStation clamshell PlayStations yeah, for the know. the portable PlayStation. You, you plug them into the street lamps. Or mm. perhaps the back of the bathrooms, or wherever you could find an outlet. So yeah, Penn Colony Station Wars, Terminal, Penn Station Terminal, Union Station, all the stations uh, in the, stations. Uh, in, on Earth before we left uh, in the forty seventh century. Yeah, you know what's up? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a great sort of story to build off of, um, especially with the whole idea of uh, futuristic uh, space travel and stuff like that. Mm. Especially with such low graphics, and mm-hmm. it's awesome. Um, I have a question right. for um, Alan, really quick. Um, are you are you jealous that Jamel is in the studio and you're not? Oh, are you I okay? Can, oh, no, I no. can answer that hey, for Alan. No, Look, you don't gotta I, I don't, make it about. Uh, no, I'm not jealous. jealous. I'm I'm pr- I'm happy that Robbie has um, expanded the show to include o- other people, and I'm happy okay. that the yeah. EGI family is growing. And I I just want to support Robbie and, and Jamel, and and I want to support. Jamel. Jamel. Jamel Johnson, uh, Colony awesome. Wars expert Jamel Johnson, uh, bringing us so much wonder- wonderful insight into these, uh, into the subject matter of this evening. And thank you for your call. Thank we you have another you. caller on the line. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Electronic Game Information. This is Robbie Allen and Jamel. Give us your thoughts on Colony Wars. Uh, I would definitely say that it is um, Colony and it is, it's a great one. It's a great one. It's for sure it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. better than one great one. It's three great ones. The three. It's one of the great trilogies, I think, of uh, science fiction, in the, in especially coming out of the 20th century with all the the woes and the devastation and the, the, the catastrophe that yeah. sort of brought us through the first half of the 20th century uh, to sort of revisit the idea of such a vast and open-ended war where literally anything can happen. It's definitely one of my top science wow. fiction trilogies. Probably the best science fiction trilogy I could even think of. The Colony Wars. So. Uh, Colony War uh, fan, caller, five. you are on the air with Electronic Game Information. Why don't you tell us about your favorite secondary Colony Wars weapon? Uh, I like the artillery cannon. The artillery cannon. Well, yeah. And that is, yeah. Uh, that is of course, a weapon with finite ammo. It's the big one, right? The big one. Oh, that's the big uh, one. Yeah, it's really big, I think. Definitely. And I'm pretty sure that it has ammo. Yes. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Uh, you, because if it's a secondary weapon, that usually means that it's one of the more powerful ones. That is it's it just one of shooting the ones. pallets? It's, 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 it's a pallet. Is it just shooting pallets of, like, pallets of cost metal weapons? It, yes. All right. Yes. I mean, that's, I knew that, but... I would agree. Yeah. It sounds like a fragmentation weapon. How does... Uh, what's space like, Collar? Um, it's, it sounds cold. Is it cold or is it warm? It's kind of cool. Because I get, I get different... Uh, depending on who I ask, I get a different answer every time. I we, Would you be able to tell? I guess not. I, I mean, isn't that the existential question? Is there is there an up and down in space? Nah, only in and out. Well, that's why you had that purple kind of radar thing that sort of spins on its own, and, and you don't know which way is up or down. There's no northeast, south, yeah. west. Right. That's why there's no gangs out there. Right. Because, totally exactly, well, except life. for the Earth, Feder- Earth Empire and the League of yeah. Free Worlds, which, except of course, for are uh, two gangs. much larger gangs. Yeah, that's, like, different. Yeah, they're big. Thank you for I your call. Uh, we have a, another caller on the line, and uh, we are just uh, having such a wonderful conversation with uh, Jamel here. It's uh, He is telling us so much ab- about ourselves, because it, when you look at a series like this that asks the tough questions about what it means to be in a colony war, if you would be so uh, bold as oh, to kind of, like, Put a, a kind of psychological, a, a sort of imprint on it for us, uh, Jamel Johnson. 
Oh, like, I mean, okay, so when Colony Wars 1 comes out, like, right. people aren't even talking about war like that. Well, because it was 1997, we hadn't yeah. even uh, started the sorties over the Balkans yet. Yeah, there was, there was none of that. We weren't, we weren't even, like, uh, messing with Kosovo or nothing. Right. This kind of brought war back into the uh, public uh, focus, you feel me? Absolutely. And then by the time 2 comes in, you know, war is like the hottest. It's like... Exactly. What, war know. war is hell. It's vengeance. Caller, uh, you are on the air with Electronic Game Information. Alan, Robbie, and, and Jamel, we are talking about Colony Wars in a way that no one else has ever talked about Colony Wars before. Yeah, that's uh, very odd. You heard? So uh, your thoughts, um, uh, your, your sort of feelings, if you knew someone who was in the Colony Wars... If you uh, if you have a special weapon that you would like to use, if you would uh, just oh uh, and of course we have Game Shark code. Um, if you would like some of those, yo, let, email me them. I, I could use some code. Game Shark codes. I I haven't completed the, the Colony Wars. Well, you nor uh, have if I you, played all of them. You haven't completed. Uh, if you were playing the first Colony Wars, you could complete it very easily with Infinite Shields. If you would like uh, me to reveal to you the. Game Shark codes for I infinite think, shields. I think that would be good. It's that eight sounds... zero zero four six three oh, B four let me get a, a pen. zero zero E E. So thank you for your oh, call man. and uh, use those infinite shields wisely. We have another caller oh, on uh, on the line. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Jamel and Robbie and Alan. And Alan. Hello, how yeah, are you? Alan. And Alan is here as well. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm feeling much better now, thank you. Okay, that's good at least. So, what are y'all talking about? Well, Colony Wars! Colony Wars, we were talking about the Colony Wars trilogy for the original PlayStation, uh, which we are doing a very deep retrospective of this week. Uh, we're asking, we're sort of going through the facts, uh, kind of cutting out the, you know, sort of getting a deeper look than what you would get if you just were reading the back of the Colony Wars uh, CD case or just the instruction manual within the Colony Wars CD case. We're at We're doing 40 minutes, been talking about Colony Wars for 40 minutes, so it's a real in-depth look, so you're not going to get that anywhere yeah. else. Yeah, like, it, it, I find it weird that no one else is talking about this, so I really appreciate it, Robbie, for, you know, you, you coming on every week and, like, talking about these things that really no one else in the industry is talking about, you know? You hear that, Robbie? Every, Robbie, I always tell you, people love you. Everyone loves you. My my yeah. heart goes out to you and to uh, everyone else who feels the same way as you. Thank you for your call. Oh, oh, wait, I, I have a question. Oh, you have a question? Yeah. So I just wanted to ask Jamel. Huh? Jamel. Huh? What's up, man? Huh? What's hey, good? how are you doing? What's bracken? Hello? Can you hear? Hello, can you hear me? Are we have the, we still have our caller? Caller? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, I, I asked you Jamel, Jamel how... how? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, man. Jamel, how how are you doing, man? I'm doing I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing swell. That's great. Nice to hear. Hey, what's up? What's up with you, Holmes? You good? Yeah, nothing much. A bit tired, but you know, hanging in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, what? Uh, uh, well, you could wake yourself up with the with a quick look back at uh, at Colony Wars if you have your PlayStation uh, r r within arm's reach. Just just pop in any Colony Wars disc, take off from uh, your wherever the ship is before it takes off and enjoy the adventure. Uh, we yeah, have a good. little, uh, we're, Jamel, we are going to take a quick break in a moment. We're going to look at some footage of our adventures, our adventures. Alan and me had an adventure on the floor of the Level Up Expo in Las Ooh. Vegas. Alan, would you like to say anything about the clip before we play it? I'd like to, uh, I and would like Jamel to understand the con full context of this clip. And when we went to the Level Up convention, I wasn't prepared for the Temptations of Las Vegas, and I had um, t an incredible time. But I, I didn't. I wasn't. Hey. Robbie, can you? I get it. Uh, th this in the clip. It's not me. It's it's me, but it's it's a different. It's a version of me that I don't like. You got caught out there. It happens. <laughs> We're uh, 
reporting to you live from the Level Up Expo. Uh, this is, of course, we ran into two snakes. Uh, uh, two snakes here at the, the convention center floor, right in the middle of the Level Up convention center floor. Very excited to talk to these two about the, the things that uh, have brought them here, the, the interests that they have, and, and what they are experiencing at this wonderful, enthusiastic, and, and, and truly, uh, I, would say, I would say it is an honor to be here with you guys. Yeah, uh, it's really fun to be here. I actually uh, ran into this guy before, and it was nice just to see him again. Uh, I'm from out of state, so seeing friends like these is always great at a convention. That's such an amazing... We have just run into... Sammy. We've just run into Sammy, a uh, wonderful, uh, beautiful costume. We can uh, take a look at this if you're a big fan of uh, Breath of the Wild, if you've uh, ever found yourself wanting items and uh, uh, mixtures or, or, or ingredients, uh, you can always uh, look forward to seeing uh, this guy uh, hopping around. Uh, he's, always got, he's always got a smile on his face. He's always ready to help out. I, I like when Robbie, Robbie always dresses up so cool. And then he says, Al, why don't you dress up? And then I get to pick my costume. He, sometimes he gets mad, but I try my hardest to be an awesome dress up for Robbie. And this is an electronic game information uh, wet, uh, screen wipe. Do you want that? Sure, yeah. They're great for glasses. Jamie, if I could ask you a question, it's, it, it's been sort of dogging me uh, ever since I sort of decided to come to Level Up Expo in Las Vegas, which is that. It requires some uh, requires some backstory, which is that uh, last year at Electronic Game Information, we tried to make our own video game, and we failed in that endeavor. Uh, the process of that was extremely difficult and painful, and really rubbed us uh, very raw. Uh, I feel like we have not come to grips with taking care of the cuts. The uh, what do you call that when the cut won't heal? Wounds wounds or uh, cuts that won't heal and so we decided to try and get back to the roots of the of what sort of got us started in the first place in, in, the, in having the talk show and running the news to have video game news live on adultswim.com and that is the gamers themselves I'm what was the question well the fact that I just want to first uh, say that you have given me so much advice over the years that I have not listened to and just being here in Vegas and having so much fun, I have now just decided that you are right about some things and partying is fun and drinking is fun and sex, sexual stuff is cool and I just want to say that you rock uh, and I've been treating you unfairly and I'm sorry to you and to you because you've both been good friends to me. I'm just lo just looking around the room here. You see so many different uh, sort of zones and people f uh, sort of uh, laying laying a kind of laying a line, creating a trench, putting uh, getting into the trench with the people they uh, love and care about. And uh, I think that it's for me it's difficult because so much of the last year has been spent uh, kind of trying to be a different person than I was. And now being here among everyone, all of these wonderful uh, this wonderful community, I wonder if I if I was. Knowing that I had been on the wrong path, if I've now found the right one. I think you have. I really, really think you have. You two friends, two friends, having uh, fun. There's no laws in Las Vegas, so anything goes. And what's the best Metal Gear Solid game? Easily Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. As uh, That's my cosplay for today. I'm Big Boss. And um, I love the gameplay. I love the story. I love the. Uh, I love everything about it, and it's great. All right, Snake Twin, uh, Snake One and Snake Two, the Twin Snakes. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, what uh, what keeps you up at night? What's the nightmare? Hmm. I would say not having anything to eat in the jungle, and not having anything to kill. So not having anything to eat in the jungle, not having anything to kill. You eat snakes, you eat the uh, swamp, in the swamp. And uh, but you, have you ever found it the the hunger to be so great that you'd be willing to take the last final step, and uh, and and eat 
Human flesh. No, but it was so bad I got to the point where I ate the Metal Gear. Uh, Big Boss. What's the question? Would you would you ever has in, in in the darkest moments of your adventures have you ever had that that the hunger becomes so great and you can't find the rabbits or you can't find find the snakes themselves and maybe the rations have run out and uh, your only your only your only friend at night is the uh, plastic explosives uh, that you use as the trip wires uh, for the enemy and you kill the enemy and you're so you're so damn hungry that's the problem with these that's the problem with being a snake with the being the 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 the, the sort of frontiersman the, the 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 one guy standing alone out there in the jungle doing what needs to be done when all else has at all ignorance has has clouded the the people in Washington and and the, and the evil uh, men in, in Moscow would you ever eat a person I would never eat another person, no, never. Thank you so much, uh, Big Boss, Solid Snake, Big Boss, Solid Snake, and uh, I hope- Two Big Bosses. Two Big Bosses, uh, Two Big Bosses, the Twin Snakes, out now on the Nintendo GameCube, uh, reissued for the Nintendo Switch, hopefully sometime in the future. Thank you so much for talking to us, and now, I forgot to get the release forms and I'm in trouble. Um, would you mind saying that you can send to us using this video on Adult Swim electronic game information? Yes, I consent. I consent. Total consent from two people who are best friends in, in Solid Snake costumes. They're like Robbie and Alan, the best friends. They have And what a wonderful uh, sort of experience we had out there. Just, you guys just are great. Couple, we were out in Las up, Vegas. We were, we were meeting all these wonderful people. It was uh, really a truly remarkable time. Incredible. Uh, it really reminds me of the importance of, of meeting new people and, and, and making connections with new people so you're not always just relying on the same faces day in, day out. And with that, we will look at uh, some of the wonderful uh, art that people have sent in since last episode. This is uh, fan art sent in by viewers, Jamal. This is a wonderful drawing here of, uh, you can see that, of the uh, Revenge of the Bird King uh, bird man, uh, the president, the king of the bird, the son of the king of the birds, and of course the creature from the game that I made up. I made up a game and that was part of it. So uh, they are looking, they're, they're looking very scowly. They're at the lighthouse, uh, and there's no lighthouse in the game I made up, and there's no lighthouse in the Revenge of the Bird King, so I don't know what that's about. Pretty freaked out. Right here we have some wonderful... Oh, and that was sent in, excuse me, by Marco Hernandez. Marco Hernandez, thank you so much for your beautiful work uh, that you've done. Chrissy Rose has sent this one in. This is... Uh, a drawing of Alan as a kind of uh, sort of figure uh, that is filled with a sort of inner sort of fire. He's got uh, yeah. he's on fire the way that maybe he was when he was out having a great time on the streets of Las Vegas. A bit of a great time on the streets of Las Vegas. Robbie, old Vegas. That's and old Vegas. Robbie, on I want to go Vegas. back. I don't want to be in Las Vegas. Well, here you are having uh, the same fire in your eyes that I saw when you became a, a slightly different version of the person that I'm familiar with. Yes. Here on electronic game information, Robbie, I'm sorry. sent in by Chrissy Rose. I, Alan, uh, this is drawing you, of Alan. Uh, this is Alan father. when he uh, seemed to have had Robbie, a little bit too much time I don't like, on Fremont Street. Uh, he I hasn't like had his, uh, hasn't rehydrated. He hasn't had don't show uh, it again. kind of uh, electrolyte solution okay, that he you. needed yeah. to that kind like of come back from that. You can I was, see all these wonderful, I was dehydrated. If you can, can we get, you can see all these wonderful uh, uh, details on, Robbie, on the, on the, uh, wanna, on the art here. I don't want to relive. I know I, I know, I know, I wrinkles and the dry do... skin. And uh, when you, uh, when you sin, you evaporate. Drop to the, the, the uh, that was sent in, of course, by uh, Benjamin Bayholtz. Benjamin Bayholtz, a friend of the show. Benjamin Bayholtz. Ben Ju Bay. Julia Santora sent this one in. Julia Santora sent in this drawing of Alan and me sort of uh, having a, a remarkably uh, uh, dreamlike experience uh, there in the casinos. You see the numbers. Oh, yeah. You see the the bar. What is bar? What is bar? Um, candy? 
Hey, Jamel, do you mind taking off that hat? Oh, my bad. Look, I just want to... It's kind of Robbie's hat. Um, like and we have... My fault. Uh, Thank you. We have a series of... Uh, uh, Nathan Peterson, a friend of the show, Nathan Peterson, has sent us in a, a series of... Uh, if you want to hold one of these, yeah. and, and I'll hold one of these. And Alan, if maybe if you were here, you would hold one too. But uh, this is uh, uh, images of... Alan and and Ben, a uh, friend of the show, uh, Ben and Cricket, uh, all as their Smash Brothers avatar. This Smash Brothers tough. avatar. What do you got there? Tell me what you're looking at there. I like this guy right there. This is uh, this looks like Alan fighting uh, Cricket. Going home. Uh, Cricket is is jumping in the air. She's leaping in the air. She's uh, thunder and lightning. And Alan has got a paintbrush. So Alan is you know perhaps not doing as well in this in this particular matchup. Yeah, that's great. See the close up of Alan. Uh, sort of folding at, as cricket. Robbie, I like when you show the art the that's just drawings of Robbie and Alan. I don't. Think and that's not a drawing. So I don't. Think well, I did art. show a drawing of, of you and I. It is the Julia Santora drawing. It it's was a wonderful. Uh, uh, you can see your shirts sort of coming up here in, yeah. the, in the bottom. So uh, we want to just yeah we want to you know maybe this is a family show and yeah, we, we keep that, the, we keep down. the skin to a minimum. Yeah. I'm sorry. So that was the art that was sent in. What do you think about that, Jamel? It's wonderful to have you here to be able to share the art that is uh, sent in by the people that watch the show, the people that care about this sort of family, this community that we've gen that we've created. I am truly happy with, to be here. With, you though. know, me at the head of the household, and Alan is part of the household, and now you are part, part of the household. Are you my dad? Yes. Robbie, who am I in the house? I'm like uh, the Alan. You are also wife. in the household. But who am All right, I? All right, so let's house? take but, a. Look, but you're you giving have, out. That was the arts. That was the arts. Thank you so much for sending in your art. You are always welcome to send in art to electronic information at gmail.com or through our Twitter or Instagram. We're always happy to see I'm the, the work that you guys do the, the, that ins, is inspired by the uh, the things that we talk about here on the show. Let's go over to our letters. We have uh, e questions sent in from viewers. Uh, Alan, why don't you uh, start us off with uh, one of the questions that you've got over there. This question comes from uh, at Melody Burst on Twitter. They say, what's the best Silent Hill game? It's the letters. Well, it's the letters. And back to you, Alan, the best Silent Hill game is, of course, most people would say Silent Hill, Hill 2. 2. But I particularly oh, yeah. like the first Silent Hill a little bit better. Me too. I find it's a little bit scarier. I, I, I think that the lower Can't resolution, the, the sort of blurrier textures, the chunkier character models, there's something that is done uh, with working within the limitations at the time. That Obviously, they had limitations for the PlayStation 2 Silent Hill games. But, uh, you know, I think that the PlayStation 1 Silent Hill game reigns supreme. Uh, what, do you have a favorite? Uh, I like, um, who was in that movie? Was that, uh, Renee Zellweger? It's the game show we're talking about. Game. Silent Hill uh, movie. Silent Hill. And, okay, uh, here's a question from Ian Erickson. Ian Erickson via Twitter asks, what do you consider the jazz of games? Ooh. That's a great question. What do we consider the jazz of games? My, 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 my first inclination is to say jazz jackrabbit, jazz jackrabbit, the uh, action platformer that was a big PC hit back in the early 90s or even perhaps even the late 80s, Alan. I mean, you're the Jazz Jackrabbit expert. Why don't you give us your thoughts on that? Jazz Jackrabbit was quite a jazzy little rabbit, and he is a side-scroller, and he would hop around, and he, I, I, he ate carrots, and I think he shot, shot bullets, but he maybe shot carrots. And that's one of the jazziest games in games, Jazz Jackrabbit. Great question. And... Doctor Who 42 asks, uh, what is your favorite Abandonware game? A game that never made it to, to the shelf and a, a game that you never got to play? Jamel, why don't you, why don't you tell us what your favorite Abandonware game is? Uh, my favorite one is probably um, Shenmue Back for Christmas. And that is, of course, when the, the Christmas time, the Christmas spirit has uh, sort of found its way into the Shenmue world. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. And uh, what is your, I have one last question, which is, oh gosh, and uh, what is your favorite JRPG on the Dreamcast, and why is it Skies of Arcadia? It is not Skies of Arca Arcadia, it is Elemental Gimmick Gear. Yes. Great. Uh, so let's have our, our, a quiz. Uh, we're going to do a special. Uh, we're doing a special thing tonight. We're doing a quiz. Uh, it's going to test your Colony Wars. Uh, uh, it's going to test your Colony Wars uh, knowledge. Is that knowledge is the right word? I Great. Think so. 
And uh, let's go to the phones and let's get the quiz uh, started. If you uh, answer the questions correctly, you may win a prize. Hello, you're on the air with Electronic Game Information, and we are doing our Colony Wars quiz. Are you ready to play the Colony Wars quiz? Sure. Absolutely not, but I will try. All right, let's uh, let's go to the first question. The first question uh, for the Colony Wars quiz in the first, the, the third act of the Cronus missions in Colony Wars: Vengeance. Who warns Mertens that his laser will not be enough to penetrate the League mining facility's shields, and that he must use his grappling hook to toss asteroids in it? At it, is it A. Lawson, B. Drake, C. Cron, or D. Mace Griffin, bounty hunter? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Can I call a friend? No. <sighs> okay. You can ask I'm Alan uh, if you if you have if you have a if you have a if you have a. Oh, ask Alan. I'll call Alan. Alan. What's up? Alan, Hello? you're the Colony Wars expert. We have we have a someone wants to uh, lifeline you a, a, a sort of query. I'm ready to help. What what is the question? In the third act of the Cronus uh, missions in Colony Wars Vengeance, who warns Mertens that his laser will not be enough to penetrate the leak mining facility shields and that he must use his grappling hook to toss asteroids at it? Yo! Yeah. That's the grappling when you release it. Well, it's more of a silent thing because it is in outer space after all. All right. Okay. That's fine. And, and you want me to answer that for the... Co who's, the co who's asking this? The caller's asking me? The caller's asking for some help. So maybe a little bit of insight. You can Hi, give I'm a little Andy. bit of a hint. Uh, would you like... A, I don't know the answer, Please? but I could... I could we could... Um, well, my, which my, answer radiates the best energy for you? Uh, it's got to be Kron. C. Kron. For, for various reasons. Right, I know you like some Krons. Okay. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> C or D. Is that what is that? Hmm. Well, you know, there's some, some. Do you? Want uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Alan. I'm gonna go with, with C. C. Cron. Uh, unfortunately, the answer is B. Shit. Drake. Drake was the what? one who told you to use the grappling hook to throw the mis the asteroids at it because the shields, the shields are too thick. You got uh, smoke, baby. Before, but you mm -hmm. got the shields are too thick. I'm sorry, but we will have to move on to our next caller so and sorry. the uh, the the next question. God, caller, smoke your dumb are, Do we have a, 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 a next? Our next contestant is on the line. Uh, you, we are playing the Colony Wars quid, he, quiz here on Electronic Game Information. Are you ready? Yeah. This is the second question. Which Colony Wars game was spread out over two CDs? A. Colony Wars. B. Colony Wars Vengeance. C. Colony Wars Red Sun. Or D. Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter. Got it. Got it. Gotta be C. I, I'm sorry. It is A. It is A. The first Colony Wars was the only Colony Wars to to be on two whole CDs. The amount of the storage needed for all of those different. Um, uh, different clips, uh, different sort of FMV sequences for all the different branching paths that the storyline could take. Uh, so two CDs. I am sorry, you are wrong. Also smoke. Next call. Oh, we have another caller on the air for the third question of the Colony Wars quiz. Uh, caller, are you ready to play? Uh, I'm ready. All right. So this is the third question. Colony Wars Red Sun. Uh, Alexander, in Colony Wars Red, Red Sun, Alexander Lyron Valdemar dreams of a mythical ship called the Red, Red Sun and an alien race known as the Coquijun. A, uh, that's A, Coquijun. B, the Shahar. C, the Vine. Or D, the Valley, the Valiakin. Well, repeat D. D is the Valiakin. A? What was A? Kokui Jun. Don't and pick unfortunately, a. you are incorrect. It is the Shahar. Kokui Jun was a name that I made up. Yeah. So uh, thank you for uh, your call, but you are wrong. We are on to our fourth question. Uh, we are looking for our fourth caller, our fourth contestant. Uh, if uh, Caller, you are on the air. Are you ready to play the Colony Wars quiz with Jamel and yes, Robbie? I am. And Alan. And yes, Alan. All right, so yeah. question four. During which mission must Slater <laughs> escort Natalie Argenta from the spaceport to Krakow Corporation HQ? Is it A, Diomedes, B, Gallinger, C, Alpha Centauri, or D, Mission 7 from G-Police? Hey, G-Police. 
Do we have an answer? Is it B. B. Yeah, Gallinger? I'm sorry, it was not B. Gallinger. It was not any of these. It was a trick question. It is Mission 5 from G Police, a, a different uh, series of games. I'll give you a hint. Related to somewhat to hit. Colony Wars, but not entirely. Uh, Jamel, uh, what do you think? Of, uh, we, not a single one right. So I think this really goes to show that the work that we are doing here on the show, the reason that we had to come into the show, is that that much more important. Education. Because to educate people about we, the we, Colony we Wars. Get focus. And I, people I, ain't focused. People are not focused. They're not focused on the, 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 the things that matter, the historical markers that the games industry has gone through over the years. And uh, we are so... Uh, disappointed. Can I get uh, plug in? Mind if I say something real quick? Absolutely. Uh, I just put out a little album. It's called I Think It's Good. It's everywhere. Jamel Johnson, it's spelled correctly at the bottom of the thing. It's called I Think It's Good. Please download it. I love you. Thank you, Jamel. And thank you so much for stopping by. Everybody, please check out Jamel Johnson online. Jamel Johnson is uh, also on Twitter and Instagram and all sorts of places, performing live all around Los Angeles and all, all around the Southwest as a, as a region. Uh, Alan, would you like to introduce the next clip uh, that is going to play Jamel out out of uh, the studio and out of our lives, but hopefully oh, not hey. for too long. Not uh, for hey, too long. Hey, hey. So happy to have Just it. long enough. I dig it. I would, for, I would just first like to say thank you to Jamel for uh, coming on Electronic Game Information. Hey, Alan, thanks for having me, big dog. Hey, Vegas. Yeah. What's popping? Uh, if any of them old ladies is still handing out uh, escort cards, tell them holler at me. Okay. You know. Well, that, uh, great. I think, yes, EGI family is happy to welcome one. It's a big family. Alan, I love you. I hope you never come back, but I love you, baby boy. I love you. Thank you. Personally. I'm not in connection with this show. Love that. I, uh, so I made a, I, I, so Jamel, you might not know this, but in this show, Electronic Game Information, we often express our feelings through poetry. And I made a video poem about Las Vegas, my just general confusion about me, my body, and just sort of physical stuff that's happening with me that's pretty personal, but I chose to express it through poetry, if that makes any sense. Body to body, yeah. And I'm just, I, I'm so sorry. And everything here is weird. I mean, no, that's fair. That's fair. The air is different. It hits different. It's like a snow globe, but instead of like fake water, it's just six. Thank you. So, Ravi, this is an, kind of like an apology. Yeah, you watch the video. It's, it should be over.
And now it is time, of course, for the list. This is a list of Psygnosis games. If you are a fan of Psygnosis games, you will find some uh, very familiar names on the list. Starting off the list, uh, City of Lost Children, followed by Shadow Master, Assault Rigs, Blast Radius, Chronicles of the Sword, G Police, G Police Weapons of Justice, Crazy Ivan, Sentient, Destructive Derby 64, ODT, Silver Load, Roll Cage, Discworld, Discworld 2, Brian the Lion, Wipeout, Wipeout XL, Wipeout 3, Wipeout 64, Rascal, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and Sentinel 2. That was the list. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait to see Jamel again. His presence here tonight uh, added so much to the show, added so much levity and, and, and humor. And I will uh, just, just be holding my breath for the day that he can return. And that was Electronic Game Information's Level Up Expo coverage episode three. We will be back next week at the same time for episode four we went a little bit over tonight so uh, my apologies to those of you that stayed up a little bit later than expected but please uh, send us your thoughts send us your uh, art and and questions and, e and emails at electronic game at gmail.com follow us on uh, twitter and instagram you can also contact us through those avenues as well thank you so much to jamel johnson please uh, check him out uh, when you can and uh you know give a thought to alan Thanks again.